Okay, so apparently I'm live. Let me just test my audio. Um, and I think everything should be working. Okay, it looks like everything's working okay. Um, I increased the volume a little bit on my microphone because I know some people um, were having issues listening to me um, on the last live stream. So, um, last time what I did was I built like a little API, quote unquote, or more, more than an API, a way um, to create type safe inputs. By type safe inputs, I mean like being able to parse um, the inputs in the UI um, safely from the back end. Um, for that example, I built this little struct that you can see on screen. Um, it's again, a very simple struct. Um, I was just testing it out to see like kind of how it could work. But now um, what I want to do, um, given all of this, is that I want to build um, a custom component, custom input component um, that I can use inside the application to do whatever I want. Um, so I thought uh, the easiest way to start would be building something like, I don't know how to describe it, like... Let me see how I can make it. Um, if I look on Google for a color picker, uh, maybe hex color picker, I don't remember. Um, so let's just look for a color picker, something like this. Um, so right here, I can go through an image and it will like get the color inside the inside the, the image, right? Um, let's say I wanted something like this, but for now, just to make it simple, um, let's make it like a hover input. So wherever the, the user hovers and clicks, um, that's going to give the, the server an input with the XY location inside the div or inside the image. Um, and that like perhaps the time, like the, the instant when it was clicked, I don't know. For now, I'm just going to focus on the X and Y just to, like, to kind of keep, keep this in mind. So I think that's what we that's what I'm going to try to build first. And then um, we can like add other stuff and make it cooler. I don't know. Come on. Don't give me an ad. OK, so let's let's build it. Let's build that UI. Um, so first, I'm going to like start from here. Um, I'm definitely going to need an XY, right? Like that's kind of like the main thing I want. So I'm going to call this mouse location, mouse location. So the mouse location will have an X value and a Y value. Um, that's pretty much all I need, right? So given that I have this mouse location um, with the thing that we built before, now we can use this struct to build um, the to parse and to build the UI. Okay, so let's go to the to the front end and let's actually build a component based on on this mouse location um so let's create a struct um struct and let's call it um mouse um mouse input props right we're gonna need some props and what does this like based okay basing on like first on the other inputs so what will this struct include? Um, it will have an ID, which will be our input ID, right? Um, so this will be a string. It will also have a mouse locations, right? So this is my shiny app, which is like the, um, okay, so this would be the mouse location, would be the, and this will be my shiny app mouse location, which is this struct to the left. I think my camera is gonna be blocking so let me let me do something that I can let me pop up the chat, put it here, put it here, and move it so that it so that I can guarantee that it doesn't so that my camera doesn't block. There you go. I think that works fine. Yep, that should be good. Okay. Um Yep, let's continue. Okay. So um, our mouse input props, right? It will have um, some sort of ID and it will have the mouse location where it will store its state. Um, I think that should be good. 
Um, okay. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. So in order to actually like build um to build some UI, right? I'm gonna take out the UI documentation. Um so you um building components, building components. It's always good to look at the documentation. So not function components. Um I'm actually looking for implement to how to implement components for a struct. Okay, let's just um, building HTML components, right? So this is kind of how the the example shows it. Um, but what I want to do is I don't want to build it like this. Um, I actually want to like make it a little bit more, what do you call that? Like a little bit more complex, a little bit more robust. So um, I'm actually going to look for callbacks um you i think that's callbacks yep so this is kind of the structure that i'm going to build it upon um so i'm going to have in this case a message and yeah i want the input to only be updated when the user clicks because i don't want like a bunch of hot dates every time the user moves the mouse but if that's something you want to do you could do it um so yeah let's implement it like this um, so we're going to implement for our component, which would be our struct. In this case, the mouse input. Let's just put a mouse input. Um, yep, M mouse input. We're going to have to implement for it the component um, trait. And we're going to have to pass it in a couple things. The message, the properties. Um, yep, this is what we're going to do. So let's copy this code because that's how we do. Um, we are going to need the, the props, though. Props, yep. Um, here, let's call it mouse input, right? So in here, instead of comp, we're going to put mouse input, right? Mouse input. Great. So in here, in this message, this is going to send a message whenever, how do you call that? Let's just put this always on top. Um, so this is going to send a message every time something gets clicked. As you can see here, on click, it's going to send this message. But we want to send some information with that. So in here, we're going to pass in X, which would be, I'm guessing, an F64. But I think it goes pixel by pixel. So maybe this has to be a U a u64 not sure how let's call this y and this will just be a tuple so it doesn't need there you go so now clicked um takes in this message this clicked message takes in two things right takes in two u64 values okay so now here in properties we're gonna have to pass in mouse input props right and we need to import in order to pass in the props um, let's look at the component we're going to need to have this we're going to need to pass in this macro the derived partially properties um, let's see what this a binary operation equals equal cannot be applied to type mouse location right because this is Okay, do I need to then do I need to implement this these properties also to to mouse location? Is that what I need to do? Looks like looks like that's so, okay. So let's let's not do it like that. Let's just put here x x is let's make this u sixty four u sixty four. Let's make X and Y. Let's have it like that. And this would have to be optional, right? Because we're going to be updating the... Or, you know, actually, we're not going to need this information here. Just need an ID. Okay, cool. I think that's fine. Okay. So, um... We're going to be building our UI thing, right? So we have an on-clicked event, and it's going to send a message, right? And that message takes in a tuple, 
and that tuple contains two U64 values, which might be might need to be F64. I'm not sure, but we'll do that. Okay. So in here, um, as you can see, we have um, a mouse event, right? It says on click. So if look if we take a look at the callbacks, um, there's many types of like callbacks, but they'll work by sending an, an event to this closure and running some logic. And this logic usually sends a message, right? That's kind of like how it's normally built. So if we take a look here in HTML and go to events, we're going to have here a mouse event, right? And the mouse event has multiple properties. Um, we have screen X, um, get the, um, the screen X field of this object, the screen Y, Client Y, um, X, Y, right? It has a bunch of of values that we can use to to pass onto our input. So in this case, um, I want the I don't remember the the client Y X. I don't remember the name of the, but it's it would be. I think it will be just client Y and client X. Because here X means um, get her for the X field now. Y now. Movement X. Hmm. I don't know which. Let's let's take a look. So which one is on mouse enter? Yeah, those are like the events. But we want the mouse location X axis. I have no idea guessing it's client x let's go for client x if it doesn't work with client x we'll take a look so here we're going to pass an event, an event and this event will be a mouse event right so let's expand this let's put here something like this so that we can more easily write our code um no 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 wait there you go okay so in here and click we're going to have to let's that let's go okay so let's see what, what error we're getting. So if we try to, let's go to our front end, trunk build, what error do we get? Um, okay, so you can't convert i32 to u64. So apparently the, this is not a u64, this is an i32, which is weird. So i32, And here in mouse click, we would have to turn this into a i32 tuple. i32, does it work now? Okay, it works. So apparently the X and Y locations are saved as a, are sent as an i32. Okay, so now every time the user clicks, in this case, it's a button, but let's make this a div. And let's make this a div. And for now, just to make it like really easy to, to see, let's put in a style. Um, with 500 pixels, height 500 pixels, and let's put in a background color red, just to make it easily identifiable. Okay, um, that should work. So now we're going to be sending a message every time the user clicks somewhere inside this div, and we're going to be sending the X and Y location of the mouse to this message, right? The thing is here, um, we still have no idea how to interpret this message. Um, from what we have here, we're just sending a message, right? Um, but that message really is not doing anything. So let's go back to the documentation. It's the best thing to do. Um, and in here, in our callbacks, um, this message submit should be um, okay, where is the callbacks, go properties, refs, no. Um, you callback message, we need to match that. Callbacks. Yeah, where is the you callback? message okay not message 
match because we're going to need to match the yep this one the update the update function okay so let's literally we need to create a function update there you go update that's what we need okay um so here it says yeah this let's let's not make it return anything we don't really need to return anything okay okay this okay let's just return true at the end um okay so this update function um is gonna be receiving the messages so in this case um we need to match um the message right to um whatever we do here right so i32 and i32 something like this so mismatch types expected in a message found tuple right so here it would be message this message clicked right and i think we wouldn't need to okay yeah so that's is bound for more same pattern identifier this is more than once Yeah, just ignore the fields. Okay. So if it matches a message clicked, right? And here we can pass in any, right? Yep, that should work. Yep. Okay, so if it gets the message, right? Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to import. Okay, we're importing everything so that there shouldn't be an issue with that. Um, what we're going to do is that we're going to get the let x equals um message dot okay so let's no let x and y equal to message mm, okay because message is a it's a tuple right with two values and two i thirty twos um message dot into would we match this we need to get the first and second values right this is tuple is this how you mm, yeah i think this is how it works Yep, this is how it should work. I have no idea why. We need to pass in a try into. Let's unwrap it. No, it makes no sense. The trade bound from message required. Yep, this. I don't know. I'm probably, probably doing something. Something stupid. Yeah, this is this expression has type message, right? I just find this really weird because I'm passing on the clicked. This clicked is a tuple. Right. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Because you're matching that message, right? And here I'm passing in this. All right. Um, if 
I pass it in here like x, y, will I be able to just, yep, okay, yeah, that's my bad. Okay, so now let's set input value. And what would the input value be? Um, okay, so since the props um, are passing here, right? We would need to get the um, the context dot props dot id right dot clone. So that's the id. That's what we want to assign, and we're gonna assign a shiny well my shiny app right because that's our global context mouse there you go and in here let's do that unused result that must be used okay because set input value right Because again, okay, if we look at the at the code for set input value. When we call set input value, yeah, it returns uh it I mean it has to be able to check that, right? So we could unwrap it, right? Or we could just do dot um unwrap or default, I think. Yep shouldn't fail now. So again, this just returns an empty result, right? So we don't really care about the result. This would just return an empty, which works. Um, unless we want to console log it, like if, if we could do like, um, let send input, right? Something like this. Then we could match send input, right? If it's okay, we could do something like this. Sure, work fine, no problem. Um, you might want, we, I don't really want to return this, but we could put it here. And we don't really have a log, right? We don't have any way to interact with the console log. So, I mean, this doesn't really matter. So for now, I'm just gonna put the on rapport, but this should be how you would handle the error so that a user, we can console log or send an alert saying like we couldn't make this work so yep okay but now um as it is right here this should set an input with whatever the value is and we should be able to now use it inside here so i'm going to create a new a new nab so let's call this um nab title let's call it custom input and let's set it id custom input right and in here let's put in our mouse input yeah we can call it like that um we could even put this in a namespace um so that we can put it as a comp uh, as a module but let's not do it for now um let's just try to trunk build i'm gonna just put in trunk watch so that we can constantly watch it let's go to our, and run our app cargo run um, in theory, um, we should now have our custom input. Okay, so here in custom input, okay, we have the box, the red box. And if we go, um, this should be sending, every time we click on it, a message to the server. Um, I don't know if we can check it through our network. Let me reload here. Go to WebSocket. Look, sent the message, right? Mouse input, X, Y, et cetera, right? It's sending the message to the server. So now let's go to our, oh crap. Let's go to our server, that RS, and let's do the following. Um, if changed, shiny, and our input is called mouse input, right? That's the, the input ID. And in here, what we're gonna do is let mouse input, right, that's 
pretty much what we want, but we need we want to set it as my shiny app mouse location. Perfect. Let's close here so that close. Um, yeah, so my shiny app mouse location, right, which is this, the type that we created, the struct, and we can set this to shiny dot get. Um, no, shiny dot input dot get, and we're gonna mouse input on let's set it on wrapper default, but we, we have no default, right? Um, so we can we can set a default later on, let's just call um, unwrap or and for now, let's set this to x equals zero and y equals zero. Um, and we would have to put here in let's just use my shiny app mouse location so that I don't have to write the namespace over and over and over. And here, let's just put in mouse location. Yep, there you go. And now let's do um, print ln x and y. There you go. That should work. Let's run our app. There you go. Let's reload right here. Custom input. Look. So if I click right here, it tells us 16, right? Because that's over the whole screen. Um, but we can make it relative. No problem. Let's make it relative. But look, every time I, I click it, prints out on my server um, the location where it's being clicked. So I think in order to make this this relative, um, we need to, yeah, it's i32. So I think in order to make this work, we would have to get screen of this object. We're going to have to subtract this screen X and screen Y. So let's test it out. Um, let's go back to our front end module and let's implement it. Um, so here, instead of well, that, we have to let X, no, it just would be, we don't have one to send the message yet here. So in here, let X equals e client X, and let's let screen X equal to e screen X and screen Y, right? And here, what we're gonna send is, um, this would be the, screen x right minus minus x and screen y minus y screen y minus y think let's check it out let's reload custom input so if i go on on here oh no no that's way wrong that's way way wrong yeah that makes absolutely no sense Okay. Okay, because okay, this is X, right? And that's Y. Up until here, everything works, right? Why is it only showing us? There you go. Okay, so up until here, everything works just fine, right? 132, it gives us the X and Y location where we're clicking. But um, how do I get the location of the, let's see. This requires a falling create mouse event. Yeah, get the screen X field of this Y. Get for the X field, yeah, Y offset. Maybe it's this one offset X. Hmm. Maybe, maybe that's it. So maybe if we put here offset X, right, and offset Y. So we would have to this minus screen X, this minus screen Y. Okay, let's see. So, so here it should be, it's 
kill giving us 14. This is probably like 12 pixels. Yeah, so that's still not giving us what we want, which is like the... I would think the screen X and screen Y thing would do it, but apparently not. Movement X, movement Y. Let's look it up. You get relative mouse position. Rust. Yeah, I would think it's probably, um, okay, let's go to HTML, events, 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 events. We need to event callback. No, that's not what we want. Mouse. On mouse up, on mouse down. On click. Yeah, this X coordinate of the mouse pointer. Yes, that's what we want on the DOM in the local DOM content. Yeah, which is the whole DOM, right? Movement wide relative to the position of the last okay that's not what we want the x coordinate of the mouse pointer in the global screen coordinates okay that's the weird thing because this shouldn't be 14 this should be zero right if that's what's actually happening if we take a look at the Like right here, this should be pretty much the 12 pixels that it's talking about. Okay. Um, that's weird. The mouse pointer in the global screen. Yeah, so if we do minus screen X. Yeah, I think that's just weird i really thought it was probably it's just screen i don't know i just wanted to to show to show zero because it says negative a big number right which makes no sense to me Like, why that? Like, relative to the global screen, this... I have no idea how this works. Never played with it. Okay, but that's... That's no issue. We can work with the client X and client Y without having to worry about the other ones. I just think that's really weird. Um... Get mouse location you. Let's see if someone else has done it. Come on, someone must have done it before. I mean, someone has to have. Screen X, client X. Closures, no JS cast on input, on change. Maybe in the callback session. 
Callbacks, callbacks, callbacks. Advanced topics, no. Getting started, no. Components, yeah. Callbacks. Client, no. Client, no. You client X. Let's see how it how people do it in JavaScript. Rect. E target get bound client rect. U target rect. Okay, I think this is it. Um, so this is the example we're looking at right in JavaScript. E client minus rect left, rect up. Okay, show me how to do it in Rust. Is this it? Target. Okay, I think that's it. But I think we need to get mouse event, dom rect. Do I have it imported? Cargo the tumble. Yep, I do. Okay, so if we do let rect equal e target dot on wrapper default dot rect no how do we do that? E target expect dining to HTML element expect it okay, let's just let let's let's be copy pasters. Okay. Let's move this two to the left. There you go. Just delete this. Okay. No method dining to for struct features get event vendor. Blah, 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 blah. Why not? Am I not importing? Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. So I can do it like this now. Tom React. Okay. But I think I'm importing everything from WebSys. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. My bad. Okay. Um, it's still no method dine-in. Um, closure, pleated, JS cast from wasm but I think I'm remove unused import okay but why is it unused import okay now it's not giving me the error but okay I definitely don't need console document and this prelude closure I don't think I'm gonna need I think it's just this JS casting unnecessary braces of course there you go okay so now Given this rect that we're getting, we do this minus rect left. So let's do it. Minus rect left. And here rect dot top. And this, okay. We do need to ask F64. And in the enum, we're going to have to change this to F64, F64, right? And in our mouse location struct, we're going to also need to change it to F64. Okay, should work now. Cargo run. Okay, yep, um, that is true. Okay, let's go to our front end. I think I also know. So in our server, this needs to be a 0, .0, 0 in order for it to be a float literal. Yep, 0, .0. zero. Now it should run. 
built. Let's do it. If I click here, it should give me. Okay, that's definitely not it. Okay, why? But why is it not sending the correct message? That's the weird thing. Okay. So back to our frontend main.rs. Let's look at the example. So e client x, e client x minus left, minus top, minus left, minus top. Yeah. That should, if we reload custom input, click here. It's giving me minus. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Like actually, I have no idea. I'm letting lax equals that. It's still building. Um, Okay, apparently I hadn't really ordered enough times. So it should be like zero, zero. Yeah, I don't really like this location being a float. So I'm gonna do it the opposite way around. I'm gonna make this SI32. I don't really like, like DOM locations being F64s. That's like, look at those, like it, it's not, I don't like it. Let's go back to our live RS. Change just things back to I32. And go to our server um server.rs and change this back to zero zero. There you go. So this should be zero, zero if I click on it. Yep. Okay. So we have it. Um, this new input thingy, basically it creates an input that we can, wherever we click, it's going to record into a struct the, the location where we're clicking. Um, so how could this be useful? Perhaps something like an image, right? Like if you click an image and you want to get the the location inside an image right a pixel location inside an image um, we could do that so let's make this a little bit more a little bit cooler for example let's let's call it like that, a little bit cooler um let's go back to our main rs let's add here um an html output yeah let's call it mouse output doesn't matter let's go back to our server rs and let's put in here shiny dot um, render html. No, that would be session, right? Session dot render would be render html. Here we pass in the session mouse output. And in here, let's put in some html to render. Um, sure. And this needs to be a reference. Pass it on as a reference. The trait's not satisfied. So yeah, here dot to string. And here dot to string. And let's put here a message. You clicked on the coordinates. There you go. Let's rerun our app. And now you clicked on the coordinates. Look. Okay, that's that's pretty cool, right? Because we're getting like the location where we're clicking. 
Yep. It pretty much works as we need it. Okay. How can we make this better, though? So right now it's a div and um like we're quite limited in terms of what we can do right um so let's make this a little bit easier to work with because right now we're setting a static height and um, width on our main that are us here we're setting a static width and height right which is 500 500 but let's make this let's put in the props um, let's add a width, which would be a U32, a height that's a U32. Um, these ones need to be set. Perhaps this is better as a string. Um, I don't know, I think we have a CSS values. So right here, when it's building the component, let's set this to Format, so style equals format um, with, yep. So here it would be, not this would be context dot props dot with dot clone. Maybe I can just set it like this. And hide equals the same thing. Yep, so here would be height instead height. Um, it should be all right. And oh yeah, and here on click, yeah, that Ah, oh, I'm missing a closing parentheses. And where's the other? Because of opening brace on click. Okay, so apparently this is an error, right? But what type of error is it? Method not found. Oh, right, of course. Um, so here I need to add the width equals, let's set it again to 500 pixels and the height, um, height to 500 pixels for now. Yep. But now this error right here. Um, okay, yeah, I just let with width equals context dot props dot width dot clone, and let's do the same with height width and height. Okay, yeah, that works. Trunk watch, there you go. Now it's empty, right? Doesn't show anything. But we can add like a class or stuff into it. I don't know if we want children inside of it. Um, like maybe an image. But I don't know if, if I place something inside this div and I click on inside that thing, I don't think it's going to register. Let's see. Image source equals Ferris. Rust. Take a picture of Ferris. Okay. Come on. No, I don't want to download it. Copy link address. No. Yep, that's what I want. Image source. Ferris, close this. Um, okay, it's taking it as a string. <laughs> what? Edit as HTML. 
There you go. There you go. If I click on Ferris, kids still registers. Cool. That's great. Okay, so we can implement the children. Children equals children. And let's make this props or default. And in here, instead of click, we can put in context.props.children. I also need to look at that. You children. This four. There you go. We need it right. Okay. There you go. Um, error in. I don't think we need double. There you go. Now, um, if we go here, we should be able to add in here, like an image, image source equals, let's take in a, the copy link address, the picture first, right? I mean, we could even not give it a hide and width. We could just, okay, but who cares? And we need a close slash mouse input. Let's take it like this for now. Yep. So look, now I can click anywhere and it's going to tell me in what X and Y location it's showing it. So yeah, let's remove the this style thingy. We don't really need it. Um, we could literally just add like um, props or default style string. Yep. And we can just put in here um, style equals context dot props dot style and props this method so like that yep goodbye that should work what's the error yeah um i need to remove this width and hide from here so another div should be as big as the image of ferris yep look so now it's going to show me in what location of Ferris I'm clicking on, right? And I can guarantee that the input is what I want it to be. So now with that on our server, we can go and do different things. Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, for example, if we had like a map, we could perhaps um, do that. I don't know. Just many things we could do. But I think that's good enough because now we have a mouse, a mouse input, right? And this, whatever we put inside this mouse input, wherever we click, it's going to give us the coordinates of of the thing. And I think that's, I think that shows the point, right? Of how we can create like custom inputs really easily. I mean, it still takes practice. We've been here for what, um, half an hour, forty minutes. And I'm like, I'm still figuring stuff out. I'm not that experienced with you. Um, but I mean, we could add like multiple images here. We could add a, we can make this, give it a style to make it like smaller, right? Um, with 100 and height 100. Maybe just remove the height and make it width. And we can do it like this. Unexpected end of input. Okay, what do you mean? Is it because of this width thing? Makes no sense. That's a okay. I made I made an, a mistake somewhere. I deleted. Oh crap! No. What did I do? Oh, I I removed. There you go. Okay, so let's add a width. Let's make this smaller. Width one hundred. For example, should work. Yep. Error. 
value move to disk call. We need to copy it. Okay, let's clone it. Let's clone. There you go. Okay, that's cool. The thing is now, how can we like make this? Let's do something usable with this. Because I mean, right here, like this doesn't really serve any purpose. It's just showing us where we clicked, right? But let's do like a simulation of something that would be cool um, if we did that. Okay, so let's, um, I have an idea. Um, we could like build like a, some sort of physics simulation thing. Um, or something with like an image. I have no idea. Because I mean, I kind of proved my point, like how to build the the inputs, but I don't know how to build anything. Like I don't have any idea of something useful, like actually worth something. Um, let's get an idea. Okay, let's do, let's change this input a little bit to make it a percentage. So in here, um, rect top, rect left, right? What other stuff, rect, left, top, bottom, getter for the bottom field of this object, right? So let's, So if we want to get rack dot width, okay, I can have the width, right? So if I can do um, x over the width of the rectangle, rack dot width, right? And here over the rack dot height. Of course, when you would need to change this to an F64, but we can do something cool with that. Let's go back to our LiveRS. Let's change this to an F64. And in our mom on our server, here we'd have to change it to 0, 0.0, right? But if we get this to compile, if we go back to our main main front end, um, cannot divide i thirty two, right? Because but here we would need to make this an f sixty four. There you go, compiled. So now it should show us the percentage of where we clicked, right? Apparently not. Let's make this bigger. It's giving us zero, zero, zero. Is it having a problem on wrapping or something? Yeah, it's printing zero, 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 zero over and over and over. Let's 
let's go to the maxilla wrecked where was the wrecked dot with get her for the width dumb wrecked with dumb wrecked with returns the right just x plus the width right Here we're doing minus the left, minus the. Returns the. Has the same value as x or x plus width if width is negative. Let's do right then. But this is plus the width. Which is weird. If if we just tell it to return the width and the height, is it going to return zero? Okay, yeah, it's probably because the the div itself doesn't have a width, right? If we gave it here a width of five hundred pixels. Still printing zero, which is weird. Shouldn't be zero. Let's reload. Yep, shouldn't be zero. It's really weird. Because I'm sending the width and the height, right? And if we go back to our server. Mouth X, mouse Y. And here we're getting it as a mouse location. I don't know if it's a problem with this default though. Could be. It's weird. Okay, let's check with unwrap. If we just use unwrap so that it panics, or maybe, okay, I'm gonna do something I don't usually do, but I think we're gonna have to do cargo watch backhand source run so that it constantly recompiles. Yep. The problem with that is that it's going to disconnect it when I'm going to have to be constantly reloading the page. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I just had to recompile. I'm really stupid. Sorry. There you go. Now, if I reload, custom input. Say, so if I click in over here, okay, the div goes all the way over here. So if I click almost at the, it's almost 100. If I click here, it's zero, right? So now we're getting it in terms of a percentage. So this is zero, this is one. Over, all the way over here should be almost 100%. So now it's showing the location in terms of a percentage, right? So let's make this into something that people might actually want to use in some use case, for example. So for example, if you're doing like a, a form or or something like that, perhaps we could add like, how do you feel with X being dead and Y being dead, for example, and we could like record, okay, this user is at this percentage of this and this. That's one thing we could do. Um, what other things can we do with such an input that could be like actually useful? Um, perhaps if we have like a map of the world um, we could like use that map of the world to like determine like key location. So like the 
like the user can like select a location. That's also something we could do. I don't know. I'm kind of like short on ideas. I'm not really being at my. I'm not at my most creative right now. Okay, hmm. let's image of the world. Let's I don't know if this is like the because I don't know like where in this map does X start. And where is Y add? Yeah, I'm kind of short on ideas. I have no idea what to do with this. Mm, okay, let's let's make this component a little bit cooler. So let's make it. Let's make it a. How do you call this? A select thing where you can select one point and then select another point. Let's do it like that. I think that's. I think that's a cooler idea. Um, okay, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so here in, in our mouse location in struct, let's change it up. Let's make it, for example, here instead of mouse location, let's make it mouse, um, let's get area select, for example. So this will need an X1 and an X2. Okay, or we could set it as X as a tuple, right? S2, F64, X64, and here another tuple, F64, F64, right? We could do that. And now, given this, um, we can go here to our code and use the mouse event. And use the movement X. The X coordinate of the mouse pointer relative to the position of the last, right? Um, but this would only be whenever we do that click, right? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's going to... Because how would we go about this? Um... This will go for like for speed and we don't really, that's not really what we want to do. Okay, so um, we do have this, right? And we do have, um, we do have like the information in terms of the struct of the locations, right? Um, so these are two public um Yeah, so let's not let's set it to public x1 f64 y1 and x2 y2 right and let's set a, um, a private field click once assigns to x1 clicks twice it has to assign to say so let's put here and clicks select like the number of clicks let's make this a u32 okay and here Here it would be an area select, right? We don't need this here. We would need that on our other part. So X1, 
and here on our message, right, unclicked, um, we're going to send that message. And here, that, that here is what where we're going to need proper default, um, x1. Now, this would not be a prop, we would need it on our mouse input struct, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So let's do it. Let's do it. So x1, f64, y1, y2, um, y2, right? Yeah, go by. Okay. So um, here, when we create it, um, let's set it all to 0, 0, 0, right? When we first create it. So now um, we're also going to need a last or n clicks. So like to get the number of clicks that we have, right? Yep, cool. So let's set it here to n clicks equals zero. Cool, cool, cool. So in here, when we calculate this, um, this gives us um, the the relative location, right? So let's, let's make this a whole one thing slash rect width and modify this so that we can have and let's just pass here x and y. Okay. So um, we're going to need to check how many times the user has clicked. So if, if he has only clicked once, then it's going to assign to x1. If, he, if this is the second click, it's going to assign to x2. Um, I don't know if this would be a Q. Yep. Okay, so let's set this instead of x1, x2. Let's set it to a length two. Okay. And now what we're gonna gonna wanna do is this if self dot and clicks um, divisible by two. Yeah, there you go. That's that's what we want. And then we can even not send this message, right? Could just make the message an empty thingy. Because now we can get that information from our mouse input, right? Mouse clicked. And here, if message clicked, what we're going to do in here is that we're actually going to be sending. Let's set this to the same. Let's make this pub x f 64 y 64 And let's send here um, self dot x and self dot y. Okay, why is this not? Why does it work? Um, missing fields x and y initialize your for area. Yeah. Okay. So area x is self dot x and area y is self dot y. To borrow self as mutable. Yep. Mute. Change the self receiver.
Okay, yeah, this error is not, I don't understand it. Change the self receiver. What's the self receiver? Where's the self receiver? Yeah, it needs self. Let's go to our other terminal. Types differ in mutability. So here it's mutable, here it's mutable. Can it not be mutable when sent to, okay, it does need to be sent through the message. Okay, that sucks. So no worries. Mm, I just don't know how we will keep track of that state. That's the only thing. Would we have to send it through the props? Is that how it works? Like this need this need to be like prop or zero dot zero zero dot zero. Is that is that how what we need to do? Because the context is seems to also not be mutable. Yeah, I don't think that's it. Can not borrow self as mutable. But if we put it as mutable, it's not going to allow us. How do we meet our own state given that? Because, okay, the update one does does do that right it does take self as mutable okay so let's let's pass this on here onto clicked and now x and y we would need to pass on the message um a tuple of two f64 double length arrays Right. So now. Or no, it would just be one F64 array, right? Which would be the current click. Let's just set it to a tuple. In that case, like, just go back to the beginning F64, F64, right? X and Y. So if N clicks, then self zero, right? And also, we're going to want to set the Yep, this works. And now what's the problem here? Mouse clicked, X and Y. Looks like we got it. Should work. Okay, now let's go. And I close the chat, pop up chat. Okay, let's go back to our server. And now, um, this wouldn't be mouse location, right? This would be the, this area select. Area select. 
and here mouse location no longer exists. So now it's area select. And when we go back to our front end main.rs, it's sending the, the whole thing, right? Yep. Okay. Now let's not print this. Now let's do, let's do a little bit of a calculation. Okay, so um, we have this, right? Now let's do something fun. Let's do um, start X. So let's do, um, so what percentage of them? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so let's calculate the like the percentage of the image that the user has selected, right? So let's do um, let start x equal to mouse input x zero start y and x and y, right? So let's do here next. So. Let's let's put a message in here. X format. You have selected. Let's remove this one. From this to this. Let's add here a percentage. Percentage, and let's multiply all of this by one hundred, so that we can put it like in terms of a percentage. Here and here. And now in here, close this, start X and X, close, close. And where did I, oh, I'm putting this whole in the HTML. Oops, here. There you go. And let's do the same thing here. But start Y. Start Y and end Y. Close, close. Okay. Let's see if this, this should have compiled. Why did it not compile? Unmatched. Oh, why unmatched? Can I not do this? Start X, start Y, format, yeah. Mm, of course, of course. Start Y. compiled. Let's go back to our app. Okay, so it's the second one's always 0%. Yep, okay, we forgot to increment the, the number of clicks every time the user clicks. Yep, my bad. So right here, after this, Right, we do a uh, self dot and clicks. There you go. Okay, there you go. Look, it's pretty cool. We're selecting from um twenty two percent to fifty eight percent. Right, that's pretty good. So, for example, just giving out. An example, let's say we have an image recognition, like a facial recognition application, 
or something something like that let's say just an example um, if we do that for example um, we could let the user draw the the square right we could let the user draw the square um, where they want to the image recognition model to run as an example or if we wanted the user to be able to like draw those let, let's let's try to do that actually Okay. Let's try to do that. I think that would be a cool thing to to do. Okay, so we're doing all of this work, right? But now we want to draw let's say a red a big red border around around the the area that we're selecting, right? So in that case, I think it would be appropriate to not do it in terms of percentages. Um, but do it in terms of um, of like the location, which we already had. It's no problem. We just need to remove this. Right? Goodbye. And goodbye. We could even like just send the width and the height as in the message. Let's do that. I don't see a problem with it. So another F64, another F64 right here. Width and height. Just because I, I think that's important information to have. And in the area we're here, we, width and height, right? If it somehow fails, it's going to... I should add just the default, but I don't feel like doing it. Height. What do you mean field of str uh yeah, this one's for private of course. There you go. There's a better way to do it, but I don't care. Um, okay. So right here, um, for this, we would need to send the width and the height, right? Width and height. There you go. Should be working. Yep, now it's just not showing percentages because we're not sending a percentage anymore. But it should still like be printing something. It shouldn't really... Compiled, did. Did the UI compile? Term. Mm, didn't, why did it not? Okay, we're making a mistake somewhere here. Yes, that is a mistake. Here would be rect.width and rect.height. Unnecessary parentheses, yeah. Goodbye. But I don't think that's a problem. Oh yeah, this is a method width and height. Now we should compile. Yep. Yeah, it's showing a percentage, but that's not really the important part. Yep, works. Let's remove the percentage thing. Now it's just pixels. But doesn't matter. Okay. Now that we have this, um, we're going to want to add here. We don't really want it to be relative, though. Or do we? That's the thing that I don't know. Okay. Let's make this a little bit easier to work with. And let's add here a div. For now, I'm just going to do it with style. Style equals border. So let's, no, I don't know my CSS rules border. What is this now? Border CSS. I want a red border. This is what I want, right? 
So let's set the style to this border. Here I want it red. Let's do that for now. Let's see if it compiles, compiles, reload. That this is the border, right? So now let me do my inspect element. I want to test how things in position would be. So if I do position relative, right? If I do top zero, where is it going to place it? Doesn't. Right zero. And if I do a width 10 pixels, height 10 pixels. If I set this to 50%, doesn't change, right? So what are the fixed initial relative sticky on set? Because if it's absolute, it's going to be, if I do top zero, it's going to put it at the top, right? All right, yeah. If I have it um, relative, it's going to put it here at the bottom. But I want it to be, how do you call that? Like on top of this. But still, if I set it to fixed, yeah, that's the top. I want it. See, let's let's look for that. So, um, div position relative to another div. Left top is not necessary, and then apply to the div to the child div. Okay, so the top one needs to have. So the first position of the parent div to relative, and then the top, okay. So, I mean, okay, let's do that. So this one does need to be, okay, so here I would have to format. And here, pos like position will always have to be, that would be done better if I just set a CSS rule, but hmm. I'm just not going to let the user change the style. I'm going to do it myself. So let's remove this style from here. Goodbye. Okay, so let's set this tile to position relative. And now this one would have position absolute, position absolute. So there it is, it's a little small point. Inspect here. Let's make this top zero. There you go. That's what we need. Okay. So this is a percentage, right? 50%. Yep. Okay. So now given this, um, we're going to want to change this position. So let's set here a border, border top. Let's call this. So let border top equals self dot... Um, y zero dot yes yeah, so let's position border top to string pixels let this so that border width, right? This will have to be I'm just going to trust copilot on this one. <laughs> um, and here. So now let border style, right? So let's do a format. And inside this format, let's put this as a raw string. 
so that we can like easily work this. So position, absolute, right? So top will be border top, right? Left would be border left, yeah, so border left. The width would have to be the border width and the height will be border height. Yep. And now here, style will be border style. Let's see if that works. Ha 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 ha. Okay, something's not working as intended. Something's definitely not working as intended, but, 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 let's set this to five pixels and red because that's how, that's how you do it. Okay, so if I click here and then here, it works, right? But then, then it doesn't work. Okay, so from here to here, it doesn't work. We set it to here, set the second, oh, okay, yeah, I see the problem. So I need them to, if it's click one, it sets one, if it's click two, it sets two, that's what this one does, right? X zero and X one. Okay, let's see. Okay, so if I click here and then here, works. But then if I click here, it works. If I click here, it works. Why does it not work there? That's 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 my that's my question. What am I doing wrong? So if I click here, then it doesn't, then it doesn't. What am I doing wrong? Border width is x1 minus x. So this would have to be like maybe an absolute value. I don't want to do the absolute value in Rust. Absolute value Rust. num standard num okay use standard num 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 it's not like that standard num num apps yeah could not find the function apps num okay this is the problem oh it's value that apps oh okay i'm stupid let's not import this with um, dumb. Let's try that now. Okay, so if I click here, okay, no. So if I click here and then here, it works. But then if I click here, it doesn't because the height. Okay, so the height should always be taken. So top left, right? Top and left, right? The height should be the difference between the both, both of them, regardless. I don't know why this is not working. Mm. 
makes no sense to me. Border hide, border width, top, left. Point for events. So I don't want this. I mean, okay. So if I click here, why did it do that? Did I make this logic wrong? Should it, instead of sign here, one? Is this the logic? Is this how we want it? Am I making a really stupid mistake? Okay, yeah, that, that's not how it should behave. It's going the opposite, right? So if I click here, yeah, not how it was, it, it was fine. I want the, the, the top position to always be the first one. And then whatever differences between that and the second one. But then if I re, this just makes no sense to me. This absolute value definitely should be there. That's the thing. Okay. So here, if I click here, the first position should have should be zero zero, right? So this end click should start instead of a zero, it should start of one. Maybe. Okay, then I click here. That should have Okay, let's let's see. Okay, so if I click here, it sets the whole thing, all right? But then now it's going to reassign the first one. So if I click here, okay. And now if I click here, okay. So why why why, why then did it not work there. So if I click here, yeah. If I click here, yeah. If I click here, yeah. If I click here, no. Why? So you select it from 210 to 67. So this should be 210. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so if I click here from zero, right? And then if I click here, again, seven, right? If I click here, then. And if I click over here, then it doesn't work. Okay. There seems to be an area where it works and then an area where it doesn't work. From zero to zero. 20, zero, 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 20, zero, zero. Clicking the same spot, zero, zero, 20, 20, zero. Why is it going back to zero? When is zero getting involved in here? I see no, okay. Because here it's taking right top, right left, right? Okay, if I click from zero, yeah, but then if I click again, why does it go back to zero? What's my, like, what's, why, why is it going back to zero? This is the only place where I assign stuff, right?
Is it something to do with his no? Client X, client Y, right top, right left, right? Because if I click right here, right? Zero to 289. If I click over here, it should be a really low number. Works. There it didn't. It assigned slick difference. Which makes no sense to me. If I click all the way over here, does that it works, right? Is the height is the, is the height and the width of the of the div changing? Just because this this just I give it a fixed width and height. Yeah, that just makes absolutely no sense to me. I click from here to here, then to here. Why does it go back to zero? I'm not clicking on. It is the border diff. Okay, okay. So wait, if I click on the div on top, okay, that's really weird. X coordinate of the mouse pointer in local DOM. So I think it has to do something with this, with this subtraction that we do, right? Because this rect is over the target, right? And what what is the target? Target, the secondary target for the event, if there is one. So I don't think we need to do it over target. I think we need to do it over screen X. No, I don't think it's not screen. Because the target. Yeah, because we're clicking on the border. We don't need to click on the border. What is the page Y and page X? Maybe it's offset. Maybe we don't need to do this. Maybe it's getter of the offset x because this offset x is read-only property of the mouse event interface offset between x coordinate of the mouse pointer of the target node let's try it out 
again, I, I, I'm I'm not really well burst on front end stuff. So here. And this within height now doesn't really work for us, right? Range parent get get her for the range parent field. What is a range parent? Range parent properties. This interface parent. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, let's do something like this. Because of course, okay, if we click the border, the, the div of the border, that's the that's the target. The target is not the the one behind it. The target is the is the div we're clicking, right? Because here. I mean, we do want client X and we don't want client Y. We do want that. So it's not offset. It's... So let's start this again at zero. Okay. So this, I think the problem is with this one. Maybe we just do E dot offset X and e dot offset y. So now here, because here we do use the, okay, we don't. So let's set it to zero, zero for now. Zero dot zero, zero dot zero, zero dot zero. Because here we don't use that, right? Yeah, we don't. So let's see how that works. Twelve, twelve, eleven. Okay, yeah, so that's this needs to be a percentage kind of how it was, right? Because right here what we do is Self X, self Y, absolute, absolute. Doesn't need to be a percentage now. If we just do client X and client Y, and here let's pass in zero zero. Okay, let's let's start by by testing a little bit. It's just Yeah, this does need to start at one. Mm -hmm. But there it's making the position absolute to the screen, which is not what we want, right? We want it to be relative to the div, like inside the div. Yeah, this is harder than I thought. I have no idea. We have the client X, we have the client Y, right? But screen X, screen Y. This is not what we want. This would be relative to the like to the home monitors. Which makes sense why we would have like two thousand four hundred earlier on because how do you call that? Because um I have three screens and one is 1920, so 1920 plus whatever pixels makes sense. That's not really what we want. The secondary target. In the local DOM content. Okay. 
Okay, I think for printing out the, we're definitely going to need to target. Get mouse click position inside a div parent. Bounds. Let bounds parent dot get bound client rect. Okay, so before how we had it was we got the target right, but here we want the dot parent. No. E dot bound get bound client rect. Is that a, is that something? No method. Okay, wait, let's see. Maybe context dot props into a client from where would that information be? Get X, Y position of component U. We don't want the target. We want the parent. Or not the parent, but... Okay, maybe we, we, we will need to set it as a target. We just need to be a little bit more creative. Let's be a little bit more creative. So the reason this is happening is because inside here, we're clicking on this, right? So if we add another div style with equals 100%, height equals 100% and the position is absolute and the C index is greater, right? If we do it like that, it will always be on top. Right? If we click here, there you go. Click here then. If we click on top of this, Why did it not work there though? Okay, if we click here, didn't work. 34 to 358, okay, there. Is it because I'm starting the clicks at Zero F one and 
Okay, click one. There you go. Okay, my bad. There you go. That that didn't work. I don't get it. So bad at front. <laughs> I don't like working with UI, but because there it should have reset the. I mean, it's a range, right? So let's see, maybe I'm thinking of the, about this wrong. So the top should be, yeah, so get min value from array in rust i don't want it from a background I want it from an array yeah i think i need to, so y dot into iter all right can we just do iter no. into iter dot min dot String dot on or up or zero dot zero, right? And Twitter, man, okay, what's the problem? The trade order is not implemented for if what do you mean? So if I do that, oh. Arrange now. Okay, let's. Sort dot. This is so weird. I don't know. Bold. Yeah, this shouldn't be. Iter min on wrap. Yeah. So if I do dot iter into iter dot min dot unwrap dot to string what's my problem I need to turn it into a vector. X, but its bounds are not satisfied. The following trade bounds is required. Okay. So let's set let let's just use let's just use integers. I don't like I'm not gonna destroy my mind over over floating points. This does really not need to be as complicated as
you mean? One mean two, two mean two. Comparison returns the minimum of two values. Okay, I think that's, we go back to F64s. Could we do that? Could we do like Y0? dot min self that y1 dot two string okay that works sorry Cool. Can we add an animation though? CSS with change animation. Let's see, I don't know how this works. So I'm changing the Okay, let's add a class to this class. Soup, um, select border. Let's add a dot select border. Yes. Okay, yeah, that's not what I want. <laughs> okay, transition. Okay. If you set it to here, here, do we also need a transition for transition height one second linear? Is that how the I did linear? Linear. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I don't think I want transitions then. I think I might just leave it like it is, like from here to here. Let's add some stuff to this. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's fine like that. So from here to here, then from here to here, then from there did here then from here to there to there to there yeah i think that works and we put here like the top 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 so, yeah that shows us like if we go super in to the absolute limit, that should be zero, zero, from zero to two. Why it's still, I don't, I, I really, I'm not going to, I don't want to play with F64s, to be honest. I'm just going to put in I-32s. I'm sorry.
honestly, floating point numbers are just too much of a hassle. Zero 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 to one sixty one. So okay, start to zero zero, right? But when I want to click it, I want it not to set. So I would have to start this at one. Yeah, let's start it at one. Let's start at zero, sorry. So that it sets first here, then to here then to here, then to here, then to here, here to here, from here to here, right? So it starts zero, then goes from 260, 298 to zero, 298, yep, that makes sense. Should it should it be like this? I don't know if this is the appropriate way to do it. Like if I do this, should it just reset when I click again? Like if this is should it do self dot equal zero? Like should should it do this? Like is that a desirable? Okay, should the third click be a reset? Because then the logic would be one, two, three, re one, two, reset, one, two, reset, one, two, reset, right? I don't know if that's how should I, uh, how I should do it. Okay, so let's let's try like that, right? So if n clicks is equal to zero, then it's gonna set zero, right? Else, if n clicks is equal to one, right? But then if um else, so if it's not equal to one or to zero, it's gonna solve dot x zero well will be equal to zero, right? Can I do that? No. Is that how you do it? Don't remember. If I do zero to one, right? Nah. 
We're gonna do zero is equal to zero. One is gonna they're gonna go back to zero and y the same. There's probably a better way to write this. Assign all values in array rust. There's probably a better way. Value. Sure. How can I do it like self x equals two zero two, something like this? Yep. Okay. I could put this inside a match statement. So match self dot and clicks, right? Zero. We will do this, right? One, we will do this. And two, we will do this, right? Then if we want, yeah, so this would be other, right? And if this one gets executed, then self dot and clicks will equal zero. I'll put this in like lines, single lines. Yeah, I think that's okay. Let's check how this works now. Okay, so from here to here, click again, zero. From here to, okay, that's not how I wanted to work. So I went from here, right, and then to here. And then Okay, so in here, I'm no longer going to do this. This is always going to be the first one. Because I know for a fact, it's always going to have to be the first one. Okay, that's not. So on to here, to here, here, to here. No, no, it does have to be the minimum. No, I think that's all right. I think if I leave it like that, it's going to work. I think this is good enough, probably. It's probably not optimal, but I think it's fine. What I could do... Okay, so I only want to add one if it's
Okay. So now what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to make it dynamically follow the mouse. So let's add another message. Let's call it hover. No, I32. It's gonna only it's it doesn't need the width. It's not gonna send a message. So now here in this match, if it matches message hovered, here would be again X and Y. It's going to do the same thing, but it's just not going to send the message. And it's also, I mean, you should design it because this one is only on click, right? This one shouldn't take care of clicks. There should be other message. This whole calculation that we do here, we could set it to um, function calculate coordinates, calculate um, area or um, get mouse position, right? It's going to have to return the tuple, right? Here, it's going to do E mouse event X and Y. So now here, we would have to do Even here, Provide the arguments. Cool. So let's add here to this width and height, right? And now in here, we wouldn't even need to.
we could just pass in self dot width and self that height, right? Because that could change dynamically along the way. Do we really need the width and the height? Why am I sending that? I don't get it. Yeah, I think I don't need the width and the height. Definitely not. It's just, I don't know why I had the idea that I needed it. I don't really. I don't know why I had the idea that I needed the width and the height. Ah, oh, that's if I wanted to calculate the percentage. I mean, we could leave it in terms of a percentage in the first place. I don't know. I don't know. Because if we keep it in terms of a percentage, it's always going to be consistent. Which is pretty good. Yeah, maybe we should keep it in terms of a percentage. But we'll do that later on. For now, let's get this working. Yes, I need to add it to the, the div. All right. Perfect. Let's go.
Okay. So now in here, I can just literally do the... It's probably a better way to do it. If I click here, it becomes one. And if I click here, it's all dead and clicks become zero again, right? Okay, this works really well. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So now this, I think this is quite um, a good way of making it work, in my opinion. Yeah, but it, it definitely should only. Because if I if it's on the third click. Right. But then if I click again, shouldn't really reset it. I think that works fine. Okay. Here's a problem. Only does it if it moves. So I think we're gonna we we will need the the same logic. Not only on move, but also on hover. But we can easily replicate this by sending the hover alongside the click. Right?
Now if I click here, the dot it didn't do it. Ah, did I reload? I think I did. Yep. Didn't change. But why did it not? That's the question. Because I clicked it, right? And I'm sending the hover this. Mm, okay, I get it. I see the problem. You should first send the click and then the hover. And what's the error now? That segment with no effect. Hmm. Yeah. But why does it not give it here? I mean, if I pass it here first, and then... Because clicking does do something. It sends the values, right? So if I want both of this, the question here right, that I don't understand is why would one do something and the other one do nothing? Is it because of that? Because I was not returning something in one and the other one is? get it so perhaps this just Okay, so we want it to set the values regardless, right? So being like this, it should bit compile. Yes.
No. I think how it was working is fine. Just on the third click, it really should just self dot x. Yeah, just reset it to this to here. Perfect. Reset. There you go. To here, reset from here to here. Reset from here to here. Reset. Yep, that works from here to here. 184 to 333. The thing is that this goes to all the. If I set a style on the div, because I mean this div. Yeah, I think it's fine. We should just probably put a border around this. So let's put here a div style border one pixel padding, sure. Just so that the user knows kind of like where they can select or not. Does it have padding? I don't want padding. Have a margin, ten pixels. That's better. Yep, I think that's cool. I think that's all right. If we set here the width, I just want to test something out. If I set the width of the parent div, this one to min content, right? Yep. That's better. Okay. So let's add and let's look for one that's under our Creative Commons license. Now let's leave Ferris. I like Ferris. Okay, maybe I don't want the hover to show the first position because the first position doesn't really matter, right? So, I mean, all of this, right? I only wanted to show if 
self dot and clicks is equal to if it's equal to one, right? So we could put this if it's not equal to zero. So to make this better, if it's the first click, I don't know, think if this, this is the best way to write. I don't know if this is like the good way to write Rust, but. I like it. I think I'm going to leave it at that. So now, um, instead of calling it mouse input, let's call it something actually useful. Um, let's call it rectangle input. I don't know. Here would be... Or area select input. Area select input, right? Area select input, right? Down here, this would be an area select input, right? Now let's take all of this and put it in in its own container. And let's make this area select input props and change it down here too. And let's put this all inside its own little module. Did I select what I need to select? Yep.
Associated function IDs private. What do you mean? So all of these needs to be. No, in here. Like this. Yeah, like this. And then where's the other identifiers? Yeah. Okay, now it compiles. Good. Okay, let's see that fix. Let's MV front end source components. Are you selecting bit two front end source components? Slash area select input.rs. Now let's close this. Let's go to our components. Area select input. Okay, that works. That works. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, let's make this instead of five pixels. Let's make it a little. I mean, we could add like make it also arguments. We could do that. Yeah, let's do that. Nah, I'm gonna do it late. Like it doesn't really matter. This is just like an example of like, it's a proof of concept. Let's make this three pixels. Yeah, that's cool to me. Let's add, let's, let's make like the, the UI a little bit. Let's um, front end. Let's make this into a module. Function, custom, input, ID, string, HTML, let ns equal, uh -huh. paste that in here, HTML, close, close. Kind of like that. Oh, you're right. Let's make this cuter. Div class row.
div class call md6. Put this in there. Div here. Now let's add here P. Um, this is an example of a custom input build with you and shiny. Yep. That's it. Click once to set starting position and drag and to position click a second time to set Click twice to set the selected area to select the area and a third time to reset. I think that's good. Let's check out. Oh, yeah, I need to add the. Good. Now let's add. I mean, we should probably switch the the order. I think that would be appropriate. I uh, know. There you go. That's better. Let's make this just column D, column D. Sure. Sure, sure. That's fine. I guess. Let's set a title. I don't know if I really need to. If I set it like this, I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. Let's set an H1. Custom inputs. And now let's go to our server and put all of this inside a module as well. Did I do something wrong? Shouldn't have stopped. Oh, yeah. Backend source server custom inputs that are us.
custom input, custom input. Why is it not rendering? Oh yeah, I forgot to put the NS equals. And here I would need to borrow it. There you go. Perfect. I'm actually going to put this one to the, to, next to it. Let's do that on the UI quickly. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I don't know what is the best way to put it, but um we could put here like H three output. Yep. That works good to me. I think it's alright. Works. Let me put an HR just to like kind of put like a little division thing. Uh, looks good to me. Okay, I think that's all for the stream. Then we got it. Let me cargo build release. Let me go to my front end, trunk, build release. Let me get add dot, get commit. Feature adds example of a custom input get push okay that's all for the stream 
think we learned a lot. It was pretty cool.